For decades, women faced numerous obstacles, whether that be in leadership roles, athletics, or their expectations. Glenbard West was not immune to these hardships. Women at West and in the world have persevered through these hardships, overcoming so much to have their rights. The roles of women at West have changed significantly over the years. When I was named principal of the local paper, had a, an article, had a headline that said, woman named principal, as it was like, dog named principal. <laughs> it was a shock. And I thought, oh, I didn't think about, I really didn't think about that. So Dr. Stevens was the icebreaker for us and the glass ceiling breaker for us. And he was, uh, I think, very aware of what he was doing with four principals. We had two men, we had two women, and that was a first. When we are in, in an audience, we are socialized to look for in, in a, a public figure addressing us, what I'll call sort of characteristically masculine um, modes of, of communication. So I think, I think women who uh, can speak in a lower register and command a room in what, what we might think of as a traditionally masculine way, who are maybe a bit taller than these things that people cannot control, right? If a man is, is like uh, laying out his vision or saying, telling a person what to do or what not to do, they're in authority, they're in control. But when a woman does it, then there's this um, uh, negative uh, response of like, oh, she's just, uh, um, it, it's, she's, she's yelling, she's screaming, she's uh, out of control, like she's being hysterical. The man's not hysterical when he says like, let's go people, let's go, let's go. But when a woman does, like, God, what's wrong with you? And so it's kind of interesting how uh, the response to power was different. Women who uh, are assertive, you know, in the context of a meeting um, are maybe seen as bossy or, uh, you know, uh, riddle and kind of unreasonable in a way that, you know, if that same behavior was coming from a man uh, would scan as, as more acceptable. It was hard not to recognize that in roles of leadership, there was um, a majority of men, you know, and that was just a reality that slowly changed. And I remember um, uh, a newer member of the group came in and we were having a, a pre-dinner cocktail hour. And he came up and introduced himself to my husband and, and myself. And he turned to my husband and he said, so, uh, so, Mr. Bridge, you know, how, how do you like being the superintendent of Oak Park River Forest High School? The assumption was immediate. Immediate. Women in leadership roles faced numerous challenges, but so did women when it came to other aspects of life. One of those challenges was unfair dress codes. As historically, there used to be a dress code. Uh, the boys had to have a belt, they had to have their hair at a certain length, they, uh, um, had to have a shirt with a collar. Uh, a girls could not come to school wearing a, uh, pants, and they had to have a dress or a skirt. Even the teachers had to uh, abide by that rule. And I spoke to some uh, students who, some girls especially, who uh, recount the, uh, coming to school in the winter, and then they'd wear pants under their skirt or dress, and they'd come in the building, and they'd just take the pants off because you had to wear a dress or a skirt. Dr. Bridge found problems with the dress code at the time. I remember going with a group of women saying, we've, we've, got to, we've got to talk to the principal about this. So we did, and we went into the principal's office there, and he listened, and eventually we were allowed not to wear, oh, jeans, forget it, ever, ever, ever. But even pantsuits, if you know what those are, <laughs> they were very tailored, they were very formal. They were just a long suit, but they were slacks. They were, and uh, we just thought that's the best thing that ever happened. Prior to 1972, Glenbard West only had two available sports for girls, tennis and cheerleading. 
1972, the girls' track team was added after the passing of Title IX, as well as the addition of a competitive girls' archery team. We only had one sport when the school opened that was available to girls, and that was tennis. That was it. So if the girls wanted to compete in sports, they had to join something called the Glenbard, sorry, the Girls Athletic Association, the GAA. According to the Women's Sports Foundation, girls have 1.3 million fewer opportunities to play high school sports than boys have. I could have been a cheerleader, <laughs> not my thing, um, but there are no other like or really organized sports. Like I didn't play softball, I didn't play soccer. Soccer wasn't really a thing when I was growing up. We had what was called Girls Athletic Association, GAA. The only active teams that were anywhere near the demand of an athlete were cheerleaders. That was about as close as you could come to that. And I felt that strongly. Um, and then as I got into uh, teaching at high schools, still there was nothing like there is now. Just look at the numbers across the board, it's crazy, and the number of sports that are now available. There was no soccer when I was in high school. Isn't that crazy? I mean, in high school, there was no soccer team for girls. Like, what? How is that even possible? It's huge today. Never cheered for the girls because there were no games. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't. Yeah. It's strange. It's so different now. In 2021, IHSA introduced the girls' wrestling team season to high schools across Illinois. Lombard West quickly adopted this new team and it's been growing ever since. It's just a varsity team for the girls since we kind of, there's like 20-ish weight classes and um, the year we only get like 15, 20. So it's not enough to make a second team. We're so fun, you know, <laughs> we're, we're, we're happy. We're really close um, and since it's like, kind of like individual, like because by, by your own improvements, was just supporting each other, making sure everybody improves very at, at their own pace and not make anyone Aww. rush. It's, it's, so, it's so cute. There were often different expectations for women versus men. I've, I think I've always been like told I have a chip on my shoulder sometimes <laughs> and I'm super competitive and I think some of that has to do with the fact that like for a long time uh, growing up I felt I felt a divide. It was more odd to know that a, um, a guy in my class who was a decent student or a really good student you know everybody was getting in the class wasn't going and that wasn't strange for my fellow female classmates. I think we are still, as women, fighting for our voice in a lot of different settings. And the forensics team gave me the opportunity to gain skills that have helped me to be a confident speaker and a confident uh, communicator. So I feel like without the forensics team, I'd have a lot more difficulty explaining myself or sharing my opinions. You get married, you have a family, occupations, nurse, and teacher. You never thought about anything else. Now, think of everything you can think of. Ladies, anything's available to you. <laughs> Male teachers got paid more than female teachers because in the early days when the school was open, the idea was that men were the breadwinners of the family and that a woman's salary was just supplemental. It paid the same amount as everybody else, whether I'm male or female, but that is certainly not true in other realms. So in a school, we're on a salary schedule, so we don't really deal with the male making more than women in a school because everyone kind of makes the same depending on your education, how many years of experience you have, right? However, in the world, it's just not like that. So I would love to see, um, you know, while I'm alive, uh, in a world where we're viewed as equal and the work we produce is viewed as equal as well. just starting to be a big push when I was in high school um, in the 90s of trying to get more and more girls in STEM. And I think at that time it was really uncommon. I had a couple of friends that grew up to be engineers and they were in a very male dominated environment. And I think it's changed a lot um, to where you're getting a lot more mixture um, of the genders in all of those jobs. And so there's a lot more role models now 
than I think there were when I was in high school. Yeah. I know that, you know, there were opportunities that those who came before you didn't have, and they've worked hard to create those opportunities for you. And so in many ways, you're standing on the shoulders of giants. If you don't pay respect to that, then perhaps um, history is destined to repeat itself. In both winter and spring of the 2022 to 2023 school year, 52% of our athletes at Glombard West were female. This year, there are also slightly more females than males participating in sports at Glombard West. Uh, male athletes compared to female athletes for the first time was there were fewer, fewer uh, males competing than females. So with Title IX coming in, um, there's more female athletes than boys. The area of athletics, it's happening. Coaching, it's happening. In men's sport, is happening. You know, we're used to men coaching women's sports. Uh, we're not so used to women coaching some men's sports, and it is starting to happen. I saw the teams expand, the numbers of teams, and the attention giving to the teams, uh, people going to games. I remember getting used to hearing young men, guys, walking down the hallway saying, you know, hey, Jane, I saw your game on Friday. You were great. I thought, whoa, that's something that wasn't part of my life at all as a student and not as a young teacher. What's a message you have for girls? and women uh, especially should be confident. And we should you know, have the um, skills that we need to communicate our thoughts and feelings, especially if we're feeling uncomfortable or misheard or misunderstood. Feel, seeing how much the world has changed, how far we've come. Happy, absolutely just happy and relieved, but I don't think you're done yet. I don't think you're done yet. I don't think the ceiling is, you know, I think there's still some big shards up there. Women in every age were uh, far more, like we shouldn't think of, uh, we, we shouldn't condescend to women in previous ages as sort of shackled uh, to a very narrow conception of, of what it is to be a human. Um, they were, they, they were often taking a lot more charge of their situations than we might anticipate. I think it's important to not take things for granted. And as females, um, there's still more work to do. So if you don't know where you came from, and if you take it for granted, then you're not gonna really help the problem. You might actually be part of the problem. Women in roles of leadership, it's just, you just gotta do it force other people to change. You really have to be the one to lead that change. You can't wait around for somebody else to do it. And so if you see something's not right, or your gut's telling you there's a better way, instead of trying to strong arm or tell other people what they're doing wrong, I think that you can lead by example. You keep putting foot in the door and you build each other up instead of tearing each other down. You have to find ways to build each other up so that we can be sisterhood. Instead of trying to tear people down to do it just for us, it has to be done for everybody. What's the next step for women in the world today? Having our voice heard more, um, and not just hearing us, actually listening to us. I don't know, but honestly, as women, I think we're killing it, and we're gonna keep killing it and so eventually they're gonna have to give us what we want <laughs> so so i hope that um that people take more time to think about what's good for everyone instead of what's just good for themselves um, and i think that sometimes we can get um i don't know new people into roles that are solving problems that are not just looking at a bottom line but looking at a greater good I'm really excited to have the girls start to see themselves as leaders of a class, leaders of the uh, academics, leaders of a club and of sports. How does change happen? 
Well, there's two ways you can make change happen. One is quickly, and the other is slowly. So just change happens, I think, number one, saying that there's a problem. And then number two, implement, like, okay, how are we gonna fix the problem? And number three, applying and implementation. I think change happens by, um, big change happens by small little changes bit by bit. Um, somebody coming in and thinking differently is mostly how you get some kind of change. If you want change to happen, you gotta be the one to do it. You can't sit around or complain. You just gotta put your head down and make it happen and lead by example. So in America, I'm saying ladies don't let anything stop you. Put your foot in every door that fascinates you, even if you think it will never open. Ask questions unabashedly, both in the classroom and out of professionals you network with. If you find yourself to be the only woman in the room, trust that what you have to say will be heard. I love that.